Rebecca. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me tonight in my kitchen. Um, I, like Veronica said, I am a gluten-free baker, um, caterer. Uh, I have a, a blog where I uh, post recipes weekly. And I've been doing these library um, presentations for quite a while now, since COVID started this past spring or last March, I started doing online cooking demonstrations for the libraries, New City Library, obviously um, included. And so we've gotten a really great response and I really enjoy doing it. I um, have three recipes for tonight that I will show you. And I'm open to questions about what I'm making, um, just about gluten-free in general. So if you, I don't, Veronica, did you say you were gonna have them put questions in the chat? And then if it's pertinent while I'm making it, then Veronica, please feel free to you got uh, shout out the recipe. And then at the end, I'm available to answer any and all questions that you might have about these recipes or otherwise. Um, so, the first, um, one of the recipes I'm going to start with actually is a Greek honey cake called melopita. It's really like a cross between a custard and a cheesecake. It's traditionally made with a soft Greek cheese that isn't that easy to find in, you know, most grocery stores. So I'm substituting ricotta cheese, um, which really is nice and creamy and delicious. This this dish is nice served as dessert, but I'm here to tell you that it's delicious cold out of the fridge for breakfast too. Um, the next, and this, web, this recipe is already up on my website, so you can feel free to go there after and read it in detail. I'm also going to do an easy semi-homemade pull apart using um, a Brazilian cheese bread, which is naturally gluten-free. And then I'm going to do a lovely salad of spinach um, with a pan seared salmon on top. So I'm gonna start with the mellow pizza since it's gonna take a good 40 minutes to bake. Um, so what I have here is three and a half or so tablespoons of granulated sugar. You could also use coconut sugar if you're concerned about refined sugar. Um, I'm gonna put two eggs in here. And you wanna make sure that your eggs are always at room temperature when you're baking. The only time that eggs can and I guess should be cold is when you're making pie crust. So any type of pastry crust, you want your ingredients as cold as possible. But when you're baking ordinarily, um, room temperature. I'm actually going to swap these for a second because we need to um, whip these with a hand mixer and the great thing about this recipe is that it all comes together literally in one bowl so i'm going to start off low don't mind the noise you want to get it so that it's nice and coffee and whipped Okay, that should be okay. So it's just frothy, really um, well whipped together. Um, then I'm going to add, I have three tablespoons of just a gluten-free all-purpose flour that's gonna go in there. If you're not gluten-free, you can certainly just use regular um, flour. I have, Mm. A quarter cup of honey, because after all, it is a Greek honey pie. It's really more of a pie than a cake. I shouldn't have said it a cake. Um, if you can find Greek honey, by all means, use it. This is just um, an organic raw honey. Okay. They go in there and give it a really nice flavor. 
Okay, I have, let's see here, this over here. Just wanna, okay. I have about a tablespoon of brandy that's gonna go in there because after all it is the holidays. And like some of the flavors of Greek baking, um, if you're familiar with Greek baked goods at all, they tend to sort of repeat the same delicious flavors. I love Greek food, I love Greek baking. Um, honey, brandy, nutmeg, cinnamon, orange. So if you're familiar at all with Greek um, baking, then you'll know. Okay, I'm going to add the zest of an orange, half of an orange or so. And I'm just doing this, I've already washed this. I'm just doing it here on uh, a microplane. Okay. Excuse me. actually needed that. Let me grab another one. Um, sorry. Now I'm going to just do some freshly grated nutmeg. Just a little bit. You don't want it to be too overpowering. And if you're not familiar, that's what a whole nutmeg looks like. You could use ground too, if that's what you have. I'm adding about a half of a teaspoon of um, cinnamon. <coughs> mm. I'm gonna do like a little pinch of salt and the juice of half of a, of a lemon. Mm. Now I'm gonna whisk this. then I'm going to stir in the cheese. Actually, I'll whisk it. Mm. Um, it really, it couldn't be easier. And I think that it's really nice. Um, like I said, served for dessert. You could do it for breakfast. These days with the state of the world as we know it, it's nice as a holiday. Drop off edible gifts. So, you know, you pick up a really pretty pie plate at Home Goods or something and you bake this and bring it to your friend, neighbor. Okay. Mm. That's pretty much it. I told you it was so easy. It oop, just comes together in one bowl. So I'm just going, and now what I have here is a 10 inch um, ceramic pie plate that I've buttered really well. And this isn't really gonna rise very much. Like I said, it's more like a, um, like a custardy sort of pie. And that's it. It's going to go in a 350 degree oven for about 40 minutes. All right, let me just stick the timer on that. And then when it comes out, I will, um, really it should set for a while um, and cool to room temperature and then be stored in the refrigerator just like any other custard or cheesecake based um, dessert, it really needs time to set. So this is actually best made um, a day ahead. Um, 
And then, you know, on the recipe that I've written up for the blog, I have all different suggestions on how you can top it. So you can do it the way I'm going to do it today, which is just with some, you know, um, simple sugar and cinnamon. You could do powdered sugar. You could do fruit on top would be really nice too. Okay. Um, I am going to preheat my other little oven over here. And I think I will do the pull apart for you. And then we'll do the salmon last. So um, I don't know how many of you are familiar with Brazilian cheese bread. This um, comes in the, it's in the freezer section of pretty much every grocery store now. This was all I could find this week. Usually Stop and Shop has one. It's in a, a red bag. Um, and it's in Brazilian um, writing. Uh, and it is a larger size. These are smaller. But basically, this is like a traditional Brazilian snack or, you know, bread that's naturally made with tapioca flour. So I'm going to, on the website, uh, it is on the website as well. These are bigger because like I said, I found the larger ones at Stop and Shop, but they unfortunately were all out of them this week when I went to buy my ingredients for tonight. <clears throat> now what I've done is I've thawed these in the refrigerator for a few hours. Okay, and I'm just sort of nestling them in a pre-seasoned cast iron skillet. And I like to use the cast iron because it gives, oops, that should be enough. It gives the brazies a really, or really anything, a really nice um, golden crusty outside. Okay. And this is sort of like my gluten-free, easy, semi-homemade spin on a pull-apart, which is nice to serve for lunch. You can have it as an appetizer, um, really anything. So what I have here is some extra virgin olive oil that's been infused and cooked with garlic cloves and herbs. And I've actually, um, I'm sorry. I have a little bit of a tickle in my throat. I just want to take this quick sip of water. Sorry about that. Okay. I was saying, um, extra virgin olive oil in a pot, a, a whole big bunch, however many you like, of garlic cloves that have been peeled and fresh herbs. You can use rosemary, you can use thyme, fresh oregano, whatever flavors you like. And you just let it simmer very low and slow for a good hour. And then you will have the most amazing, fragrant, delicious infused olive oil. Um, so what I like to do is pour this, and I keep this in the refrigerator. So I've taken it out um, and let it um, get liquidy again, because when you store oil in the fridge, it tends to um, solidify. So I am brushing them and it smells so good with the olive oil and the garlic and the herbs. Okay. So what I've done is I've just brushed them. You can actually take, if I can get them out, some of the garlic out. And if you um, are not gluten-free and, or, you know, you just can only find regular frozen dinner rolls um, in your freezer department at your grocery store, then you can use those as well. Um, I would just recommend not using the type that is going to rise too much. Uh, otherwise, you might have some overcrowding going on. This is like a nine inch size pan here. Um, these are not going to puff up huge like typical dinner rolls will, but I guess you could, you could use those too. 
Um, so what, I've, what I'm doing is preheating a 400 degree oven. These are gonna go in for about 10 minutes. And then uh, right at the end, I'm gonna sprinkle some shredded mozzarella cheese on top and then let them get all nice and cheesy and melty and ooey and gooey. And then, um, you know, it's nice. You can just eat them as they are. If you like that really strong garlic and herb flavor, you could always add raw garlic um, chopped up or sliced and uh, additional herbs. Uh, just be careful that the herbs don't burn. Um, just make sure that they're oiled really well. And that's pretty much it. And you know, you can serve those with a side of um, tomato sauce, sort of like a spin on pizza, uh, an easy pizza, pull apart bread. Are there any questions so far before we get into the salmon? If you do have questions, feel free to put them in the chat. Danielle, you mentioned your website a few times, so I also already put the link into the chat as well, directly okay. to the website. Right now, nope. we don't see anything in the chat. Do you want me to allow people to unmute or save that for the end? Yeah, they can unmute. That's fine. Um, the, the cheesecake is, you know, sort of doing its thing. And I'm just going to start working on the salad components. So if anybody has any questions so far, they just want to throw something out, that's great. OK, so I've turned on the ability to unmute for everybody. So if you have a question, just go ahead and unmute. And you can, you can ask away. Okay, so I'm going to grab all of the things that I'm going to be using for the salad. What I'm doing, we're going to make a dressing. So maybe we'll do the dressing first and let that sit. Okay, okay. so let's start with the dressing. So what I'm doing um, today is a salad of um, raw baby spinach with citrus segments, a citrus Dijon vinaigrette, and I'm doing some pan seared salmon to put on top of the salad. I also have some pickled onions that I've made, which are delicious, and I can walk you through um, how I did that. So I will start with the dressing. I have here um, two ounces of freshly squeezed lemon juice and two ounces of freshly squeezed orange juice. It's about one regular sized orange and one lemon. Okay, and I like to use um, the glass mason jars to do my dressings. It's really easy to shake, add everything in, shake them up. You can do a huge amount. You could do, you know, like a smaller amount like I'm doing tonight. And then it's great. You can just pop them in the refrigerator and you know, they're good pretty much whenever you need them. Um, and because there's acid, enough acid in there, they stay for quite a while. So in the dressing, I'm going to put a small amount of Dijon. This is um, yeah, about three fourths or so. I mean, you can do this to taste of a teaspoon of Dijon mustard. I'm using um, this one from, oops, from Trader Joe's. And I like it because it has, it's like that coarser grain mustard. Okay, I'm gonna use honey. I mean, this is the raw organic honey that I'm using, which I also used in the cheesecake. I, you know, I just, when I'm doing a dressing, I really just eyeball things. So maybe a tablespoon or so. It depends on how sweet you like it, really. And salt and pepper. Okay, so I'll just do some freshly ground black pepper in there. And then we'll do a good pinch of salt. And, you know, I added the Dijon to this dressing recipe because I think that Dijon and salmon go really well together. They're sort of like a match you know, made in heaven and they're, you know, they're always seen together, if you will. Now I'm just going to um, drizzle in my extra virgin olive oil. You want to use a good quality olive oil so that you really get the flavor of the olive oil. 
Um, the typical rule of thumb for a vinaigrette is usually three parts oil to one part acid, so fat to one part acid. So, you know, the, really the best way to gauge it is just to um, shake it up and taste it. And I like using these jars also because it's easy to transport. So if you're bringing a salad to someone's home or you're dropping it off to them, you know, as a food gift this time of year, um, it's just easy to transport. I'm going to taste it and see. Needs more olive oil. So this is a citrus-based dressing. That's my acid. Um, citrus right now is actually uh, really in season. And I'm gonna add a little tiny bit more of the honey actually to offset the tartness of the citrus. And again, there's really no right or wrong way to measure out the ingredients for a vinaigrette. It's really just a matter of your personal taste and what you're pouring it over. So as long as there's balance, I think it'll work. Okay, so that should be good. Ideally, you want to um, make your dressing ahead of time. You could even pop it in the fridge. You could make it a day or two before and just, you know, the longer it sits and the flavors sort of meld together, the better. Um, I'm also going to start my pan going here. Ooh, wow. Um, I'll keep it on low for now just to sort of start heating it up while we talk about the rest of the um, ingredients of the salad. So I have here, let me get all this out of the way. Okay. Okay. So I already have some citrus sliced. And that is just, I believe it was just like a, a tangerine or something. Um, so, and right here I have a bed of baby spinach. I try to use organic whenever I can. Okay. So this time of year, citrus is really great and it's, it's in season. Um, so I just wanted to show you, this is the same orange that I used before to zest in the melopita. So the easiest way I find to cut the segments out of a piece of citrus is to cut the top and the bottom off so that it's sitting flat and you want to make sure that your knives are really sharp. I actually just had my knives sharpened. Um, locally here in Congress, I found a gentleman that did a great job. If anybody wants to know uh, his name, let me know. I can give you that information. Okay. So you want to take all of the, you know, skin off. And then Ava, if you could get in a little bit closer, you'll see the lines in the citrus, okay? For each segment. And you just, you know, really just cut along the lines. Just, you know, take out that inner um, pith, I guess you would call it. And you can use any type of citrus that you like. Is there, um, is there a question? Uh, someone does want to know the name of the man who sharpens knives. Okay. Um, his name is Dennis, and his business is called Eagle Sharpening. Not easy to find. It's like a commercial area, but he's right in Congers, right off or right on 9W. Um, oh, like again, a little obscure and hard to find, but look him up on Google, give him a call. I don't think he has a website, but he did a great job. Um, so my knives really needed a tune up and I figured right before the holidays was a great place, a great time to do it. And I like the idea, especially nowadays of supporting local businesses. Um, and quite honestly, I had used Sir La Table when they were still in Nanuet. And I wasn't 
tip, I wasn't too thrilled with the job that they did. So there's that. Okay, this is a pomelo. Um, this is from Florida. Most of the citrus now, you know, is coming from, you know, from Florida or I guess, um, you know, Georgia. That is absolutely beautiful. Look at that color. So if you're serving this, um, you know, it's a company. It's just, it's a beautiful, beautiful salad to serve. And because I'm topping it with a protein, uh, the salmon that I'm going to use, it's really a complete meal. Okay, let me grab... I think these need a few more minutes. I'm gonna let those go a few more minutes and then I'll check them. Um, so same concept. I'm not gonna cut this whole thing because I'm not gonna use it. So pomelo is um, similar to grapefruit, but a little bit sweeter. Um, and like I said, the color is just beautiful. And I thought that the combination of the spinach with varying um, types of citrus would be really nice. Okay, so let's just sort of get <clears throat> this out here. There we go. And these pieces are gonna be a little bit bigger, so you can you know cut them in half if you want. Okay, that should be okay just for tonight's purposes. So the other thing too um, about these types of salads, I do them a lot. Um, I have a few uh, recipes on my website for salads and um, dressings that I've made. I kind of like the idea of doing them on a platter, a large platter. I just think that it's, yeah, it's prettier and you can really display the ingredients and they don't sort of get lost in like a big deep bowl. So if, you know, if that doesn't matter to you, then, you know, by all means just use um, any type of bowl or whatever that you like. Um, okay, <clears throat> the next thing, well, I have pickled onions here, which are gonna also add to the contrast of flavors. And then I have fennel. Um, I just want to move this citrus out of the way so that I can work on this board with the fennel. Okay, so that's going there. Okay, no need to wash the board because it's just citrus that was on here. I'm just going to kind of wipe it down a little bit. So over here, I am heating up a pan. I'm using a... Um, it's a nonstick green pan, okay? And I have here um, avocado oil, which I like to use over canola or vegetable oil when I'm frying. Okay, you don't need too, too much for the salmon. In the meantime, while that's getting hot, I'm going to cut up the fennel. And fennel, if you're not familiar with it, has like a very um, bright licorice sort of flavor. It's a traditional thing for Italian um, families. We, you know, always bring out the fennel um, on Christmas Eve, Christmas Day. After you've had a big meal, it's sort of like a, um, uh, like an after you eat sort of like way to settle your stomach and cleanse your palate, if you will. Um, so I've discarded all the outer tough part and I've gotten rid of the fronds. And this is just like a handheld OXO mandolin. So I'm going to take it. I'm not even going to use the guard because I really don't think I need it. And then, you know, with fennel, how beautiful that is. With fennel, um, some people love it, some people hate it. So obviously don't add it if you hate it or if people that you're serving it don't like it. Um, but you wanna go like really thin with it. And you could even do this really thin on a mandolin and 
toss it into just like a regular salad. It's, it's really good for you. Um, again, I like the different textures and flavors, and I think the brightness of the fennel goes really well with the citrus and then with the salmon. So I'm gonna put that on top. If you've never tried roasting fennel, I highly, highly recommend it. It's absolutely delicious and it completely transforms the flavor profile of eating it raw. Um, it just gets really, really rich and just delicious. Um, and it's great with carrots too. If you roast those together, it makes a beautiful side dish. Okay, so that's um, the fennel. What I have here too is um, pickled red onions. Okay, now I did this a few days ago. I did it ahead of time knowing obviously that um, I was doing the demo for you all tonight. I've, I'm going to post this recipe on the blog, if not tomorrow, the day after. All of this, including the dressing, will be on there. This was super simple. It's really just um, a large red onion, sliced, you know, kind of thin. And then I make a really quick, simple pickling liquid on the stove with, um, I'm just gonna use a fork, with water, vinegar, sugar, a bay leaf, um, you know, and I just sort of let it hang out. I absolutely love the flavor of the pickling, of the pickled onions. It just gives it like a whole different look. Um, and it's nicer than adding the raw onion here. And it softens it a little bit too. And I mean, that color with the citrus is unbelievable. So I'm all about like the color and how things look as well, especially if you're serving it um, for a special occasion. Okay, so let me check, um, make sure that these are not burning. Okay, before I do the salmon, I just wanted to show you guys how these look. Okay, they could, they really don't take long. They could probably go for another minute or two and then I'll do the cheese on top. And you can see that they, um, they puff up nicely. So I have the avocado oil here. What I have here is um, wild sockeye salmon. This is Copper River Alaskan salmon. I'm gonna do this really simply with just black pepper and some sea salt. Pink Himalayan sea salt is what I typically use. I have it, this was a large piece that I cut into thirds and I've patted it dry and I've let it drain in the refrigerator on paper towel because it, you know, it tends to be pretty wet. And I'm going to put this um, flesh side down in my pan here. Okay. And you're just gonna leave it there. do its thing for three to four minutes depending on how uh, you like to eat it. Okay now at this point um, I'm going to put the dressing on the salad. Actually you know what I'll uh, yeah okay I'll put the dressing on the salad. Okay. Just a little bit is all that you need in the beginning. And then you can toss it up and then add your salmon on top. I almost hate to do that, but. And then you're gonna lay the salmon on top. And you can top that with additional dressing, um, yeah, additional dressing if you'd like. Okay, in the meantime, yep, that still needs 15 minutes. Let me pull this out. Okay, um, because this is hot, I don't know, Ava, if you wanna try to just come over this way a little bit. I'm just gonna take the 
You can see that they've puffed up quite a bit here. I'm going to take the shredded mozzarella and put that all over the top. Um, you could use really any type of cheese that you like. You could do uh, fontina would be delicious. Okay. Let's get this back in. I'll let that go for a couple of minutes. Okay, we'll check our salmon here. The key when you're doing um, a protein like this is to just sort of let it do its thing without moving it too much so that you develop that nice brown, golden brown crust. And then, um, you know, you can flip it over. Actually, I'll probably be better if I use a spatula here. Now I'm gonna let it go for another minute. Are there any questions in the meantime? And if you have any questions, you can unmute if you like. I don't have any in the chat right now. Okay. If anyone wants to unmute, they're certainly welcome to. Again, you can, um, I mean, you could probably, you don't like salmon. I happen to love salmon. My daughter loves salmon. My husband and my boys, not so much. Um, I try to always buy the wild salmon, really wild fish and seafood in general. Um, but if you don't like salmon or, you know, you could always use a different type of fish for this and it would, the flavors would still be amazing. I have a question about the knives. I'm sorry? I have a question about the knives. You had your knives sharpened, yet it seemed to be a serrated knife. How do you uh, sharpen a serrated knife? Um, I will tell you, uh, I did not bring him my serrated knives. Serrated knives are really tricky to sharpen. Um, they, he will do them. However, he did caveat that by saying, that over time, if you continually have serrated knives sharpened, they will not be, you know, the, the teeth on the serrated knife won't be as sharp because when they sharpen them, they're actually taking metal away. Um, so I chose not to have the serrated knife sharpened. Um, yeah, that's I, that's what I saw, but I, when you mentioned the sharpening, you had a serrated knife in your hand. I'm saying, how did she, how did she do that? You were not supposed to do that. So it, we're both on the same uh, level, I think. Actually, this is not a, this is not serrated. If you want to come in on that, Ava, this is just um, a chef's knife. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Okay, I'm going to flip the salmon. That has a beautiful, crusty flesh. Okay, and then we'll just get the skin sign a little bit crispy too, because I do love a crispy skin on the back of my salmon. That's just, again, my personal preference. Here we have the pull apart. Now, if we were not on camera um, and time wasn't of the essence, I would probably let this go a little bit longer and make the cheese a little bit more brown. Um, but that's basically uh, the pull apart, what you're going to get here. And let me just show you. I can just use, uh, what is that? That was the onion. I'll just show you here. Oh, these cast iron pans are heavy. But you can see that it gets nice and brown on the bottom. And, you know, you can just sort of go in there and pull it apart. And if you wanted, you could dip it, like I said, in some tomato sauce. It's just a delicious little snack. Um, Is there another question? I'm sorry. Oh. 
All right, so I'm going to shut this off because I don't like my salmon overcooked. I usually tend to go for it on um, the more rare side. Okay. And then you're going to put, oops, there's some fennel. Just drain off a little bit of that excess there. I'll leave that there for now. And there you have this lovely salmon dish. If you want, you can put a few extra pieces of the pickled onions on top, which is really nice. You can add a little bit more of the dressing, or you can just serve the dressing on the side and people can add their own. Um, we have about eight or so minutes left for the honey, the Greek honey pie. I don't know if um, you wanted to chat about anything prior to that being ready to come out of the oven, or I could just show you where it's at now if you would prefer that. I'm always happy for a chat, um, and certainly everybody's mic is unmuted, so you just have to unmute on your end if you want to ask a question. Which fruit? The citrus? Um, yeah, I mean, if you don't like citrus or you can't do citrus, I know like my husband, for example, um, tends to get some acid reflux from citrus. So if citrus is an issue, you can omit that. And um, I don't, I, maybe just some um, like chunks of avocado would be nice. You could also sprinkle some candied walnuts or pecans on here for a little bit of crunch would be nice also. Margaret, I see you unmuted. Do you have a question? Yeah, how many people does this me meal feed? Well, I mean, this salad that I made here easily will serve three people. Um, you know, each portion of salmon is probably five or so ounces. So you can scale it up or scale it down however you need to. This is about one container, you know, the, the hard shell, um, clear plastic container of baby organic spinach, the, the regular size one. And, you know, again, you can scale up these, the citrus um, to add more or less. Um, there's definitely enough dressing in here that this will last you, you know, at least a week, if not two, um, if you're just using it um, for yourself. So I would say this would be three people. Okay. All right. Thank you. And if, like I was saying before, if salmon is not your cup of tea, um, you could use halibut, which would be really nice, and that's a fish that stays together well. Um, you could use uh, Alaskan cod, which is also uh, a nice white flaky fish, um, and that, you know, will typically stay together pretty well. Usually any type of fish that, you know, has a skin on the back um, will stay together well, if you're going to start using like a flounder or um, um, like a sole, those are really delicate types of fish. So I probably, you know, they don't sear very, in my opinion, they don't sear very well because they tend to fall apart. Well, I love flounder because uh, when I went on a cruise to Alaska, I had it every single night for dinner on mm -hmm. the cruise and I was completely happy. So I'm, yeah. I, I love I absolutely love salmon. Try it. I mean, I I love flounder too. I will be honest, I typically bread it and fry it and it's you know delicious. But it's just lost a video there. I'm sorry? You just lost your video. Oh, I'm sorry. I think somebody's trying to call my phone as I'm filming this. So did it go away, Eva? Okay. Yep, there you go. <laughs> I, uh, I do love salmon. So, I mean, um, flounder. Yeah. And I like to fry it. I just find that it's like, you know, like I said, it's a little bit more delicate. So 
you have to be a little bit more careful when you're flipping it and maneuvering it in the pan. Um, you know, if you don't do fin fish per se, you could even do this with shrimp. You could do this with scallops as well, would be really lovely. Are there any other questions? Um, any questions about the cookware that I'm using, the pan? Um, that is a cast iron, if anybody was curious. It's a Pampered Chef, I have a couple of them. I just wanna show you. So we're about five or so minutes away from this being done. You can see that the edges are set and lightly golden and there's just you know the slightest bit of jiggle if you will in the center so i'm going to leave it for another five minutes or so and then i can show you how i like to um top it elaine has her hand up so you want to go ahead elaine yes um the um the toaster that you use to make the little bread things in yep. what what is it okay um Ava if you want to come over here this is like one of my favorite kitchen gadgets if you will this is a Breville this is the smart air this has when I tell you a multitude of functions on it let me see if I can light it up for you and I, I'm gonna be honest the capacity the size of it is fantastic I can actually you know cook like a turkey in here if I take these two things out um, so it does everything from proofing bread dough pizza dough it will dehydrate it you can I mean the sky is the limit um, this top basket here is for air frying uh, well it would have to be moved down but I just keep it up there out of the way um, it really is a fantastic oven I love the Breville brand and that's not you know they're not paying me to say that <laughs> okay okay yeah. thank you thank you it's the only downfall is it does take up quite a bit of counters yeah. so I mean I have it over there it's sort of out of the way um that would be the only thing I would say is the only you know drawback is that it is pretty large oh, okay okay thank you we have any other questions? Oh, if you don't like fennel, um, just, you know, you can just omit it, really. Um, you could probably just, you know, I, I like to include it because I like to try, try to put flavors together that are complementary, but they sort of, you know, give you like that pop in your mouth of like, ooh, that was nice together. So, you know, the fennel gives you that licorice sort of flavor and that crunch. If you don't like it, I mean, you're, it's not going to make or break the salad. You could certainly omit it. You could probably try um, uh, maybe like jicama sliced really thin. You could try in there um, or, you know, just omit it. Do you have any tips on cutting jicama? Because I find that to be nearly impossible. <laughs> Um, I don't because I don't really use it very often, but it is very hard and I believe it's considered a root. So similar to like uh, the ginger root, I think, um, I, I'll, I would have to get back to you. <laughs> you know, it has like a tough outer to it, um, but it's certainly not as easy to maneuver on a mandolin. Um, I've seen it like shredded, like, um, matchsticks almost. You could probably try doing that in your food processor with that disc attachment. And yeah, that was one of those blue apron left curves where they're like, turn this into matchsticks. I'm like, <laughs> me and what army of knives? I don't yeah. know what I'm supposed to say. Fair. That's where the food processor comes in, in handy with the, the disc blade. Um, let me grab some sugar so I can just show you how I'm going to finish the top of this honey pie. How about the spinach? What could you use besides the spinach? Um, any type of hearty green that you like. You could use mixed, you could use um, arugula, 
would probably be my next best pick for the bed of greens. If you don't like spinach, I like to try to do spinach whenever I can just because it's so good for you and it's full of iron. Um, but if you don't like spinach or you can't do spinach, I would maybe do um, baby arugula would be really nice. Okay, um, let me get, just so I don't burn my oven here, uh, my countertop. Let me show you. Now, again, I would normally, if we were not on camera right now, I would normally let this go for maybe another five or so minutes. Um, and I would absolutely let it cool <clears throat> to at least room temperature before I topped it with anything. Um, but because we're on camera, I'm going to do it this way. Um, so I am just going to do, so this is like the traditional way of topping this honey pie. Um, they just do some granulated sugar, oops, sprinkled on top. Okay. I mean, you can do as much or as little as you want. And then cinnamon. Um, this is the cinnamon that I prefer. I use a couple of different kinds, but. And if you have one of those little handheld mesh, you know, sieves to make it come out really pretty and nice, you could use one of those too. Um, but I'm just gonna sort of eyeball it here. Okay. And that's, um, that's pretty much it for the honey pie. It, is a, the type of dessert that you will want to spoon out of. And let me just show you if I can here. Again, it might be a little runny because I haven't uh, let it set, but you can see, you know, it's set all along the edges there. And because I've buttered the pie dish really well, nothing is sticking. Um, you can do fruit on here. You could do a fruit compote. You could do fresh fruit. You could do whipped cream. Um, really, you know, if you have like good Italian cherries, like uh, um, Morello cherries or Amarena cherries would be absolutely delicious on this. Um, and again, it's great for dessert. It's uh, on the lighter side and it doesn't have a crust. So um, I find it to be a little bit on the lighter side um, you could do another drizzle of honey on the top if you wanted as well. You could even do, I've seen it done with a sprinkling of um, sesame seeds on top, which is really nice. So that's pretty much it for tonight, what I have for you. Um, like I said, the salmon salad recipe will be going up on the website probably by tomorrow or the day I also, after. I did email out the uh, recipes that you sent me, Danielle. Okay. Most people are signed up. So if you want me to just send you that PDF um, and I didn't send it to you already, just give me your email address and I'm happy to send it out right now. Yeah. And if you go on the website, there's, you know, my, I posted pictures too, if you'd prefer that um, for the pull apart as well as for this. And I put all of my serving suggestions in there as well. And, you know, this is great because it can be eaten room temperature or cold, whichever. Any yeah. other? There was a comment in the chat that it's beautiful and looks delicious, which I agree uh, with. Um, I don't have any other questions coming in, though you're certainly welcome to unmute and ask. I will just say I've never been more convinced you're a professional baker because I've never seen cinnamon come in that size. <laughs> Funny. I mean, I use it a lot. This is like what I use mostly. Um, it's the, because I use a lot of cinnamon and I eat it a lot. It's like naturally antibacterial. And so, you know, you do research and you find like, you know, you should be eating this or that. So this is the one that I like. It's the Ceylon cinnamon, as opposed to some of the others, which you know, like they say in large quantities can be not great for you after a while. So that's the one that I use. And I ordered it on Amazon. So <laughs> hence the 
us. Where, where all things come from. Uh, Eileen says, everything looks so delicious. Thanks so much. Thank you. Do we have any other questions? Cooling time on this, if somebody posted a question, would be, um, I, would, I would let this sit for like a, a good, at least an hour, if not more, depending on how quickly you wanted to serve it. Ideally, I would make it the day before, let it sit in the fridge overnight so it really firms up, but, um, you know, an hour or two at least. All right. Well, thank you so much. Um, thank you. We really appreciate it. Always great to have you back, Danielle. And I'm yeah. very hungry for my dinner now. I'm sure everybody <laughs> else is too. Um, so, uh, Helena, I just saw you unmuted. Did you have a question? Okay. Maybe next time I'll unmute. Um, but I'll just say thank you so much again for, for coming tonight and making us a beautiful dinner that I'm sure we all wish we were eating instead of going off to prepare our own. Um, and again, anybody can email me. I'll put my email into the chat again, just in case I missed you with those recipes. Just let me know. You can email me at any time and I'll, and I'll pass those along to you. Any closing remarks? Just thank you everybody for joining me. Um, I wish everybody a really happy, healthy, safe holiday season. And if there are any questions for me that you think of after um, the, uh, the session is over, you know, you can, I guess, get my contact info from Veronica, unless she's already posted it in the, um, in the chat box there. I'm going to repost your website because I put it up earlier as well. So I know you're yep. to I'm on, I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. Um, I post often in the gluten-free Rockland and the gluten-free um, Bergen County Facebook groups. Um, you know, although most of my recipes that I make for the, for these demonstrations and for the, for the blog, you know, they don't have to be made gluten-free. Um, so there is a lot of versatility there. All right. Well, thank you so much. Have a lovely evening to you. Thank you. Thank you to your daughter for being a wonderful camera woman. Again, we appreciate your efforts. Thank you. And, uh, thank you everybody for attending tonight.